hard to generate that that drive to finish out strong. And I was proud of the way our group responded, especially finding out that our best player wasn't going to be able to, to, to compete and, and play in that last game and to put ourselves in a position again to, to win a game late and, and just fell a few possessions short. Um, you know, credit to those guys and, you know, the, you know, the, the, the young kids that have certainly come into college basketball and don't know much better because they've never gone through a situation before, uh, but made it made it through 22 games. And uh, if you would ask me at the beginning of the year that we'd get our entire conference slated in and, uh, um, you know, we're able to play 22 games, I, I would have said, I, I don't I don't know that I'd take that. You know, I don't take that number. And just because of all of the things that were going on, not just here institutionally, but across the country and with other teams, and when you're relying on not just what's going on in your program, but what's going on in the programs that you're preparing to face. Uh, I'm proud of the way this group responded all year, and I know I said some of this at the end of the at the end of the Mount St. Mary's game, but you know, the support that we received here from you know our pandemic response team, James Downer, our athletic director, Jenna Hirsch, our trainer. You know she's been she's been fantastic all year, not only dealing with all of the injuries that we had, but helping our guys navigate COVID. You know she comes in and tests us three times a week, and uh, it's been a big big part of us being able to get to this point where we can even talk about playing 22 games and you know the the, the season itself certainly the record was what it was I mean you can't argue that I think it's a, a Bill Parcells I think he was the one that, that, that said that and I was talking to Bob Crucial our vice president for advancement the other day and we talked about that you know you look at the record and you know as, as, as competitors and as athletes you can look at numbers and you can look at records and yes that's what we're judged on I understand that. I signed up for this thing a long thing ago, knowing that you know, we're going to be judged ultimately on wins and losses. However, this year was a little different for me, and the progress that we made um, within the program didn't didn't show up in box scores. Uh, certainly, a year where we had to deal with more injuries than we've ever had to deal with. Uh, and I'm not talking season-ending injuries. I'm talking injuries that that kind of go throughout the year. And I, I, at unofficial count, I think we had missed 21 games due to injury and or COVID. If you take the COVID situation out of that, I think we were down to 14 games. In the last two years combined, we had missed seven games. You know, one of the things, one of the reasons we were able to make a run the last couple of years is everybody was healthy for the most part. And, and in a normal year, you need to make sure that you're healthy throughout the year to put yourself in a position to play those three games in March. Unfortunately, we couldn't get to that point this year. However, we, we saw a lot of growth with our young kids, we, we started four freshmen at some point. I thought Ramir Dixon Conover, his growth and the leadership that him and Miles displayed throughout the year, those two kids had never been captains. And all of a sudden they're thrust into a, a COVID situation where they've got to lead a basketball team of, of young kids who have never played college basketball. And, and what they did throughout the year was tremendous, and it's not going to show up in a box score. You know, although some of the numbers will, you'll see you know the growth and, and, and the progress that, that those two kids have made. But that's going to, that's gonna, you know, be more visible five years from now, 10 years from now, when they're, when they're out in the real world and they've got a, a challenge that they need to face and that they're going to overcome. We're going to get right back at it. We're starting workouts. Uh, Tenet will be planned to start them this Thursday. We'll get in the weight room on Monday. And I'm looking, I'm looking forward. I'm eager for both of those, um, you know, to, to see how, to see how things take place. I, I chose my words wisely. Quite. I want to make sure that I, I didn't, um, <laughs> Have, make you have to read between the lines but you know the, the one thing I think I'm most excited about is our strength coach Jake Myers is awesome he's fantastic he didn't have a preseason with our guys he basically showed up we we're already in a weight program and he was thrust into a group of guys you know who, who were already in a little bit of a routine and I'm, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing him work our guys and let our guys see the preseason postseason Jake Myers instead of the in-season Jake Myers get back on the basketball court. We met as a staff to talk about some things individually and then where we need to take this thing, um, you know, big picture. The one thing we will guard against is just because everybody's back doesn't mean that everything's going to be great. So I challenged the staff and their positional um, responsibilities to come up with one, maybe two things that these kids can, can build on. And we're going to meet on that uh, tomorrow and not try to overwhelm them with 20 million things because they're still trying to navigate this pandemic a little bit. And they're still working on, you know, making sure that they finish the, the, the classroom in, um, in a, in, in a fashion that we can all be proud of. And, um, but getting them basketball players didn't want to wait. I didn't want to wait. Normally we give them two weeks off and, and allow them to catch their breath. 
in part because we have a summer normally. We start practice the beginning of October and then play well in March. Uh, this year we had 69 practices, uh, which is 21 fewer than last year and 31 fewer than the previous year. So we haven't had as much practice time. We didn't have a summer. And so we're going to get these guys back in the gym and work on getting them to be better basketball players. And they're all eager to do that. And that's that's exciting for me to get back in the gym and see them grow on the court, see them grow in the weight room and, you know, continue to push them to be the best version uh, of themselves. You know, it's it's uh, it's an important offseason for everybody, but it's an important offseason for our guys to know that, hey, listen, let's take that next step forward. Let's make sure that we, you know, continue to grow individually and continue to you know, move the needle as a program. And we made it through the pandemic. Okay. We made it through a college basketball season with the pandemic, something you can always say we completed the schedule as we were, as we were given. And I'm proud of our group for that. And, uh, you know, certainly fell short of, uh, of the goals that, um, you know, that we always set out to, to achieve. However, that year, this year, uh, you know, more than any year, we're going to make sure that we get these guys to embrace the little victories that, that, that they were able to have throughout the year, not always on the court, but sometimes just in life in general. And um, again, it's been, been a, a crazy year but we made it through everybody's healthy uh we had a few kids that did you know contract the virus obviously like every other part of population but only mild symptoms and uh uh certainly you know like everybody anxious to get fans back in the stands and, and, and be able to play without masks and all of those things when, when it's the appropriate time. But uh, we made it, we made it through, we're healthy and we're ready for that next step. All right. We're going to open it up to questions. Corey looks eager to ask the first question, but it looks like he's frozen. Um, are you okay? I'm good. Uh, Phil and then Corey and then Jordan. Uh, Rob, uh, I asked miles after, after the, the Mount St. Mary's game, uh, Similar question I ask you about, you know, if there was any particular area that he thought uh, this team could really improve on. And his answer was discipline. And I, I took that to mean, you know, understanding things like like time and score, uh, keeping poise when it when the opponent was desperate, uh, you know, like Mount St. Mary's got at the end of the game. And they threw that press press on at the very end and got him a couple of quick buckets, kind of gave them some life. Uh, do you think that was a was a good answer from him? Because I, I thought it, it kind of, of hit on things that that uh, you know it seemed to resonate. It was a great answer, and it was it was our challenge all year. Phil was was the, the attention to detail and understanding that a college basketball game in many situations is won by or lost in a few possessions, and and it's not always at the end of the game. I think I think our numbers and, and miles. You can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think we lost seven games by six or fewer points. You know, and that's one or two possessions here. I mean, those are those are two possession games. So that attention to detail is something that yes, we are going to focus on, and, and it's something that we need to be better at going into um, you know next year. And and that's and again, here's the thing: that's not just on the basketball court. So we've we've tried to help these guys understand that attention to detail isn't just on the basketball court. It's in the classroom. It's in the weight room. And you know, to get them life lessons that, that you want to be a certain way in all areas of your life. And greatness is something that, um, that we want them to strive for. But that, that attention to detail will be a focus of ours. Yes. Just a, just a quick follow up on that. Uh, that that's something that, you know, you would think would go along with with actual game experience. But, you know, obviously there there got to be ways to, to maybe, uh, you know, flatten that curve. Uh, you know, what kind of things can you do in the off season to, to get those guys so they're they're in a position so that, you know, they don't have that moment of brain freeze when when the team, when the opponent throws something up that they, they weren't expecting or they get in a situation where, OK, now we're down one and three seconds to go and we have to get a good shot. We have to keep our poise. There are a couple answers to that. I'm going to do one off the court, one in the weight room and one on the court off the court. I hope you have a summer. And the reason for that is our guys can figure out where the cafeteria is and how to use a meal plan. We didn't have that this summer. We went into week three of our season uh, of the semester. And we had guys that had no clue that they could use 
certain money here, certain money there, and they pay the money in one place. I took for granted. I took that for granted. That's the that's the those are the details. So now I have a kid walking around thinking he can't eat, and we had to make sure that we taught them how to use the cafeteria stuff that we normally do in the summer. That's one thing. The second thing is when we talk about details in every area of their life. I mean, we've been you know academic. Sarah Ross has done a great job with our guys, and we've had back to back semesters now, spring and fall. We've had above a three point oh GPA for the first time, and I think forever. So that they're getting that part. I and mean, it's been a slow and steady build with that. In the weight room, a part of it was there was a hold up with our gear and when it was getting here and you know some COVID things and all that. We have it now. They're going to wear the same gear in the weight room. And if they don't, the strength coach is going to hold them accountable to that. And so those are some of the things that, you know, just the, the little details that add up so that what you see on the court is a byproduct of doing that in every aspect of life. Okay. The other thing, Phil, that, you know, and it's out of our control. When you talk, I don't know, and, and Miles, you can help me with this, but I don't know how many lineups we did, different starter lineups we had. Some of it was injury. Some of it was coaching decisions. Some of it was COVID related. I think we had one player complete all 22 games. I, I think Mark Flagg is the only one. So some of that is just coming down to guys learning how to play together. And that's one of the things that in the past, we didn't have, we had guys that had played 32 and 33 games together. And in some cases, 77, 88 games together. And that's just going to come with time. I can't speed that clock up. When you're playing four freshmen, starting four freshmen, and, you know, and having guys in that rotation, you know, I think you can look across the country, and those teams that are relying a lot on freshmen, there's a lot of ups and downs because of that attention to detail. Just the transition to college alone, Phil, is, is, is a challenge in a normal year. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that our guys are going to be able to figure that out in all areas because of the staff and because of the things we have in place. But I, I hopefully that, that, that paints, I mean, there are a lot of things that we can work on here and the basketball part's going to be easy. That's the easiest part. It, it's, it's the other things to get them, you know, moving everything in the, in, in the same direction. We use nine starting lineups this year. Uh, only one of them for more than three games. Uh, there you go. Rob, um, the glass half full is you built a program because your players really improved from year one to year four. Keith and Isaiah, certainly foremost, first and foremost. The glass is half empty would say you don't have Keith and, Keith and Isaiah anymore. And those were diamond in the rough recruits that turned into superstars that were really lightly recruited. I just want to ask you if the process that you've built this program with is repeatable. Yes, because we have young kids in the program that want to be great. You know, the, the what, what, you know, I'll go back to Earl Brown, you know, and Ronnie Drennan and those guys that came before them, they got Keith and Isaiah on that, on that trajectory. But they want to be great. They want to be coached and have a staff that will do those things. So development will always be at the heart of what we do. And um, the experience that these young kids got this year will help us develop them because the good we can obviously continue to help them get good in those areas but the areas that they need to improve it's a lot easier to point to things on film and in game situations than it is in practice so yes we will we will continue to duplicate that and continue to develop these young kids as they go from freshman to sophomore sophomore to junior and junior to senior and uh, you know it, it'll be a big off season for us to put that stuff into place but i'm going to look at it as glass half full but yes we will be able to do that and not just because of the basketball I talked about Jenna, our trainer. I talked about Jake, our strength and conditioning coach. I talked about Sarah Ross, our academic coordinator. So much of that development, Corey, is in the public eye, it's what they do as basketball players. But because we have all of those other areas where kids are being challenged to develop, that's the consistency that I'm looking for as the basketball coach. And that's the consistency that I want our guys to understand that we're going to develop in all areas. The basketball part's the thing that for them is most exciting because it's how they identify themselves. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that we you know, put them in a position where they can be successful and, and, and be the best version of themselves in all areas, and especially in the basketball court. Well, the one follow-up to that, though, Rob, is, again, those guys were stars. Those were two of the best Saint basketball players St. Francis has had in 50 years. So can you do all of that? Do you have to have more stars, I guess is what I'm asking you, or can you do all that just through the course of your of your development with everybody else? Yeah, I mean, I think when you talk about guys that are once in a generation, yeah, I mean, th those two guys put themselves. But when you look at Isaiah's trajectory, too, I mean, Isaiah was a talented kid, but not really until his year is uh, in the January did he take off. You know, his first go back and look, I think it is numbers the first uh, part of last year were very up and down. So, 
guess the final product of both of those two kids and Keith's consistency is again, I mean, his, his numbers speak for themselves, but there still was a development in each of those kids. And, and, you know, now maybe it's not going to be two, maybe we have to, you know, it's, it's going to be four guys and it's a different type of development, develop more of a team trajectory instead of individual. It's, you know, th- those are all the challenges that as a coach you look forward to, because if every year was the same thing, we get really boring. Now it's a little bit of a different challenge. We have talented kids. We have kids that, that, that can, become all conference players in this league. And if, you know, we'll see how that plays out here in a couple of days, but, you know, I, I think that there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, things to look back on to help these kids get to those points, you know, different players. Now we can challenge them um, to grow and to develop, but develop a team in a very different fashion. It's a very different set of kids than we had three, four years ago. Jordan. Hey, Rob, uh, obviously uh, I'm new here, but uh, going through the coverage uh, uh, from my colleagues here, I, I, this season it seems like you're very vocal about the uh, experience that your student athletes have been going through this year, obviously a different season. So what lessons do you think can be learned through a tough season, a different season like this that can be moved forward into next year? Obviously not a season you expected, but uh, something maybe that they can grow on, not only on the court, but off the court. I think two words come to mind, perseverance and uh, patience. Um, perseverance is one. These guys persevere through a very difficult season, very difficult situation, both both in basketball and, and going through a pandemic. You know, so that ability to persevere and get to the end and get to the end and complete something. They completed 18 games in league play. So that perseverance to stick with it every single day. And of the 69 practices, Jordan, I could probably count on one hand the number of times I really had to get on them about going hard and practicing hard. And, you know, that effort and the attitude – I. I don't want to coach that. You know, I want to coach basketball. And for the entire year with all of the stuff that was going on, we were able to coach basketball. You know, now it was some pieces here and some pieces there based on who was in for COVID and who was in for I me. Mean, that was the, the challenge for us as a coach and for me as a coach. But these guys came to practice every single day, did exactly what we asked them. And that's where the patient comes in. Sometimes in life, you do everything you're told. You do everything right. You do everything you're supposed to, as the book tells you to. And the results don't come right away. But that doesn't mean you can't stop doing what is right. And that doesn't mean you can't stop waking up in the morning and trying to be the best version of yourself. It happens at different times for everybody. You know, some people can come in and they can be freshmen of the year. Some people have to wait their time, you know, wait until they get to be a senior. You know, that, that patience is different for every team. It's different for every player. And so I hope those two things, that perseverance and patience, those two, those two things, and I think they go hand in hand. And those are lessons that, I mean, we all know sitting around the screen that will help you in a lot of different areas. You know, the, the perseverance part, being able to fight through when things aren't going your way, and that patience of being able to do what is right, even though the results aren't immediate. Easier said than done for a group that pays attention to these things and sees everybody's stats, and, you know, you, you want to be able to teach that patience. I think the last thing, Jordan, is thankfulness. You know, when you talk about being able to be where these kids are, and they're, active, they're actually competing. There are kids in the, across the country that didn't get to play basketball this year. There's some high school kids and there's some, some college kids that didn't get to experience a season. And so that ability to be thankful for, for, for a couple of things, the opportunity to play and for the work that goes in from the people that, you know, that, that, that allowed these kids to go and play basketball. And that's th- those are three things that they can take with them into life. If you live a thankful life, you're going to be okay. Because there are going to be a lot of tough times, but if you can if you can keep perspective on what you're thankful for, it, it can help you get to those tough times, along with the patience and the perseverance. So, oh. hey, Rob, uh, going back to the roster, uh, you say have everybody back. You said uh, you said on uh, Friday night that you uh, will have 13 scholarship players uh, on the roster next year. Uh, just to just to be clear, is is there no one that you – is there no turnover that you expect with this roster? Do you expect the same 13 guys on scholarship? Do we have anyone that's that's in the transfer portal or you accept or you expect to be in the transfer portal? Uh, will there be no new scholarship freshmen or transfers on the team next year? As we sit on March 1st, the 13 scholarship guys that we have in the program right now will be in the program next year. Now, we're, we're not even a week removed from our season. You know, so it, we're going to get back on the court and, you know, have conversations with these guys, talk to them. We all know that the big elephant in the room is transfers. And we've been very fortunate to, to, to not be in that situation. 
Um, I'm not naive enough to think that it's never going to happen. At the same time, you know, St. Francis is a special place. You know, when you look at our two seniors electing to come back for their fifth year, I think it speaks volume for those young kids. You know, that, hey, listen, this is a special place. And at this point, 13 scholarships that we have right now will be back next year, and there will be no new additions to the program from a scholarship standpoint. How will you address it then if, if someone does enter the portal? Are you, do you still – you still have to be out there. I mean, will you be looking at the portal to take someone to replace them? Would you go with a, a smaller roster? Are there guys that are at the high school level that you still have to be in touch with just in case? Uh, we, I mean, the recruiting is year round. We haven't been able to go out and recruit physically since last March 13th. And that was extended again through the end of May. So we're not going to be able to do that. We can't even bring kids to campus, Phil. I mean, it's a dead period. So we're not, I'm not even allowed to have kids come to our campus. And um, you can watch kids on the phone. You can do all that, but the challenge is obviously getting them to campus. And, and we always have to recruit. You have to, you have to keep your – you have to be prepared for everything because if you don't and then things happen, you're going to be recruiting out of desperation, you know, and we, we try to recruit out of preparation and, and make sure that we know where guys are. We make sure we know, um, you know, our needs. And, and uh, Portal High School, I, you know – We'd have to address that, you know, if and when something like that would happen. But it, we keep all of our doors open, keep all of our options open. We, you know, we recruit, um, you know, uh, whether it be the class of 21 or the class of 22. I mean, you've got to be prepared, uh, you know, for all of those circumstances. I, you know, it, it, where we are today, we won't have to worry about any of that. We just concentrate on the guys that are in our program and make them better. All right. Has the dead period um, provided extreme challenges for you, Rob. You're a school. You've said it many times. Once you get a kid on campus, the kids will fall in love with it. But if kids can't go to campus and then they see a six and twenty record, what is what is the challenges now of of, of recruiting and selling the pro, selling the program and the school? Yeah, I mean, at this point, I mean, one one season, obviously. I mean, I, I hope that the work that we've done, uh, you know, in previous years can give an indication of what type of program and what kind, what type of basketball player can, can come out of St. Francis. The challenge becomes Loretto, Pennsylvania. It's not like, you know, a, a kid can just up and come up to our campus as if we were in Philadelphia. You, know, you, you could say, oh, you know, I'm going to go take it to school, but you end up driving around campus and check it out. And there's an element they can do that here, but they can't meet with me face to face. We can't take them into our locker room. So that becomes the challenge. The hard part isn't, you know, we can Zoom all we want. You know, you can talk to a kid all you want. You can watch all the film you want. And, and some of these kids we've already seen live in previous years as, as we tried to build our, 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 our recruiting base. But the, the hard part is getting them to campus. It just, and then think about it as a parent, like I, I would not want to just send my kid off without seeing the school or meeting the people. That's hard. I mean, that, that's that's a challenge, and that 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 becomes the biggest the biggest recruiting hurdle is allowing kids to come to our campus to to see the things that 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 are special. You know, you can talk about and I, and I worked used to. Uh, it's an old saying, like you talk about. Uh, I can't remember who used this, but it's like saying, "Hey, listen, we got a really good steakhouse." Hey, you got to try the steak. You got to try the steak. Well, you need to take my word for it. You can go to the steakhouse and find out that the steak's really good. But until you eat the steak, you really don't know how good it is. And, and that's kind of how it is from a recruiting standpoint. You don't know how special the place is until you get up here. Uh, Corey, are you good? Um, I'm good, good, yep. Okay. I so saw your hand. Uh, Phil, Jordan, anything else? I'm good. I'm good. All right, guys.